It is two o'clock on the nose. Go for it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so we're here to talk about Medicare and um, probably a lot of things a lot of you already know. Um, I'm first going to tell you who I am. And um, I've been a volunteer with SHIC, which is the Kansas form of SHIP. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember off the top of my head what SHIP stands for. That's a national, every state has one. So in Kansas, it's called Senior Health Insurance Counseling for Kansas. And so I've been a volunteer with them for a year. So I'm still learning lots and lots of things. But um, what I've really learned is how important it is for people who are nearing the Medicare age of 65 um, to be sure they talk with someone and understand their options. So um, hopefully I'll have some information for all of you who have already been on Medicare for a while, but also I really hope that you will share with anyone you know that's turning 65 or getting ready to retire to be sure and explore their options because I've seen a few people make some mistakes that have cost them a little bit. So that's what I'm here to talk about today. So first of all, oh, here's some other contacts for you. So I work out of the East Central Kansas area on agency, agent, agency on aging, and they serve Johnson County as well as Miami, Lynn, Franklin, uh, several others. And then there's some um, sites here, the social security site, the Medicare site, the last one, the, Kansas Insurance Department site is really useful, something I use a lot in my counseling. So I wanna be sure you have that um, for you to go to. It's a, a source for looking for uh, insurers for Medigap policies, as well as dental vision, those kinds of things. So as I was saying today, first of all, I wanna talk um, to those of you who are currently on Medicare uh, because open enrollment, as I'm sure you're very much aware, is opening up this week. And what you should be doing, if anything, and how to compare plans. I'm going to go over a pretty high level, um, but there will be time for questions and answers later. And then, if you need more information, you can talk with me, or you can call the ship um, or the SHIC area office, and another counsel counselor will talk with you. And then I want to spend time on some basics uh, for people who are new to Medicare or will soon be new to Medicare and a few tips and tricks, and then some questions and answers. So for those of you currently on Medicare, um, the open enrollment starts Friday is the 15th, and it goes through December 7th. Any changes you make will be effective the 1st of January, 2022. So if you decide to make a change on October 15th and on October 30th, you're like, no, I wish I had made that change or I wanna make a different change, you can, you can change away. Just be sure it's done by the end of the day, which I believe is midnight on December 7th. So the last thing you've done on December 7th should be the one that you are with. Open enrollment, this can sometimes be confusing. I get a lot of people saying, what am I, what's open enrollment for? Or having misconceptions about it. It's, if you're on a Medigap policy with a Part D, it's for you to change your Part D plan or to review your Part D plan. If you are a Medicare Advantage, instead of a Medigap in Part D, then it's for you to review and potentially change your Medicare Advantage plan. You can also change from a Medigap to an Advantage plan. Uh, no, that would happen, that would happen in January. So um, that's what, those are the two changes. If what, what you're currently on, changing your Part D to another Part D or changing your Medicare to an um, Advantage to another Advantage plan. If you look, check it out and decide you have the best coverage, then you do nothing. So um, there's a warning here to be very careful if you're considering dropping your Medigap policy and changing to Medicare Advantage, you might be looking at those policies during this time period and you could make that change in January if you decide to go to a Medicare Advantage policy. So I'll talk about some of the, that as we go through this. All right, so when, you, when you're in open enrollment time, what should you do? Well, you all should have received a little booklet in the mail, unless you signed up for um, electronic ones, but you should have received an annual notice of changes. So that will tell you how your premiums might change, um, what the drug coverage changes might be, 
If you're in a Medicare Advantage program, it will tell you um, if the hospitals or doctor's offices have changed. So you want to, when you get that, and you already should have that, you want to take a look at it and see how those changes look. I was very pleasantly surprised. My husband is on a uh, plan D and last year we had never seen a plan D for $7 and 30 cents a month for the premium. We're like, wow, that's so awesome. Such a low, low rate. So he's not on very many meds. So he took that and I'm like, well, that's going to go up to probably $15 or more, but it went down to $6 and 60 cents. That's the, the cheapest premium for a plan D. Um, so if you have that one and you haven't had a big change in your drugs and you're happy with it, you probably don't need to make a change in your plan D. But I always tell everybody, you know, best, the best thing is to put on your calendar in late October, early November to go into your Medicare.gov account and take a look and see what is out there. So you can do that by logging into Medicare.gov and it will show you the current plans you have with the current drugs that you take. It may have some old drugs too. So you wanna look at those very carefully and be sure that the drugs that they have listed for you are current and make any additions or changes or dosage changes that you need to do um, to update that. And then that will allow you to compare drug plans, whether you're in a Medicare Advantage or in a drug plan, you can compare drug plans only, or you can compare, compare Medicare drug plans and um, you can do it with or without costs. I'm not sure why you would want to do it without costs, but um, you can. You will need to enter the pharmacies that you are willing to use or want to use. Um, some plans play nicely with different, different pharmacies. So I like to always put in Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, and mail order. You can put in up to five. Um, so if you but if you really can only go to one, there's one pharmacy and that's really the only one you can go to because it's you know just down the street and, or they deliver or something like that, then put in that pharmacy. But um, if you can put in a variety of pharmacies that you can go to and be willing to change, then you're more likely to find some better rates. So on the next slide, I'm gonna show you a sample result. I put in some drugs um, and show you a sample result and we'll talk about some things you can look for. Again, if you're happy with the current plan, you don't have to do anything. If you wanna change, um, you can enroll right there on the website. And as I said earlier, you can make changes throughout the open enrollment period. So here is a sample. I couldn't log in because I don't have a login because I'm not Medicare eligible yet. But uh, and I didn't log in for my husband because he wasn't here to give me his permission and his password. So um, I put in some medications that you'll see on the next slide. And the best plan given those medications for just a plan D, not including Medicare Advantage, came up as this well, well care value script PD. And they've been around for a long time, I understand. This is a monthly premium. And this is the yearly drug and premium cost. So the, the 12 months of the premium plus the anticipated drug cost at a retail pharmacy or at a mail order pharmacy. Now I put in, I put in Eliquis because I wanted to show you a high dollar drug. So that's why that's kind of high. Um, I sorted on the lowest drug plus premium because that's the total cost. You can sort, sort on just the lowest premium if you would rather, um, you, I'm here, I'm looking at, it doesn't show that, but I'm looking at just drug types, but we'll show you a Medicare Advantage in just a moment. And then when we click here, and this will be the next screen, it's gonna show you the detail of the drugs and their costs. And I'm not, I didn't do screen prints of everything that you'll see, but I'm just getting you in kind of familiar with a little bit of what you'll see. So this would be the first plan that came up for me because I didn't have a current plan. If you are already have a plan D or a Medicare Advantage, the first plan that comes up will be the current plan you're in, even if you do the lowest drug and premium. So go ahead and scroll down to those next two or three plans and take a look at them and see how those costs compare with the plan that you are currently in. Okay, so I mentioned the next thing I did was I clicked view drugs and their costs. 
So these are the drugs that I had put in um, for this hypothetical person and the pharmacies I had put in. And so you can see that we have preferred pharmacies. Three of our pharmacies are preferred. Walgreens is not, it's a standard standard in network, but you know, for the, I think that's Fosamax, you'll pay $78 a month instead of 81 cents a month. So you might want to go to Walgreens, CVS or do that through mail order, which is $1.25. The Eloquist is what's making this plan so expensive. It's a name brand drug. So I think that's a tier three. And the lisinopril again is not much. Um, if you were on the actual page under medicare.gov, you could scroll down and see your costs by month as well. So it gives you a lot of good information, but unfortunately you have to take it one plan at a time. So you, you know, might look at your current plan and then look at the next lowest cost plan but you have to go through those one plan at a time to see them. And then what I did here, because we had the Eloquist was pretty expensive. On the next screen, I changed it to a, uh, a Medicare Advantage plan. I chose a PPO plan because that gives you more flexibility than HMO plan. And so here you can see that your drug cost is, you know, quite about 60% of what it was under the plan D's best plan, but it is a, um, it is a Medicare Advantage plan. So you are limited to the physicians that you can see. And so um, I don't recommend you just plan change to Medicare Advantage plan just because that's the lowest cost. Cause I have other recommendations for you to consider before that. Um, other things you can do to help with drug costs is look at this, uh, the pharmaceutical assistant programs. And if you're in medicare.gov and you put in pharmacy assistance in the search box, it should bring this page up for you. So you don't necessarily have to find the presentation and go click on this. Um, or just in Google type pharmaceutical assistance, Medicare should get you to the same page. So that's a way, uh, what I'm learning in my training I had just last week is that Eliquis and other drugs are, um, there's, there's two manufacturers for Eliquis, I believe, and they have programs. So you can contact them to see if they can give you a better cost, which I believe would be outside of Medicare. If your income is low and your resources have dwindled, um, you may qualify for extra help. This is the full extra help limits. They don't tell us what the other extra help limits are, but when you're if your income is, has dwindled down um, to around 20,000 for a single person or 30,000 for married people and your resources have declined and that's everything except your primary residence in your car. So it's your 401k, but if you've used, you know, or in our case, a 403b, if you've used all that up or if you have family members who've gone through all of that, then, um, applying for extra help through social security is another avenue. And then another option to help with drug costs, like I just showed on the previous slide, is to maybe think about a Medicare Advantage plan if you're not already on one. If you're already on one, then you're getting that lowest cost. Okay, I'm going to move now into some basics for people who maybe are new to Medicare or will be thinking about it or even if they're turning 65 and they're going to continue working, things that I want them to think about. Um, so the first thing, like I said earlier, is please, 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 please um, do some studying and talk to a SHIP counselor. We're free, we're provided by every state. Uh, we are neutral. Um, there are also brokers, you can certainly talk with them. Um, they do tend to get paid by uh, the insurers, so they might, I have not really heard of anybody that did, but they might try to suggest, you know, one plan over another. We try to give you neutral um, information. And if you, even if you are going to stop working, you're 65, but if your spouse will continue to work, um, you also may want to defer applying for Medicare or getting into Medicare. Well, let's see what we have. So we have four parts probably know most of this. Part A and B are what we call original Medicare. Part A covers, helps cover hospital costs. If, as long as you worked for 40 quarters paying FICA, 
uh, there is no cost for Part A. Part B covers doctor's visits and other providers' charges. So the doctors you see when you're in the hospital, the um, x-ray technicians, the anesthesiologist, all of those are covered under Part B. And there is a premium this year, um, the current year we're in, 2021, premium is $148.50 a month, unless you're in a higher income. And that bracket is, starts for um, married filing jointly at 176,000 or just gross income. And there is a deductible under Part B, which is $203 this year. We don't know what the rates are for next year. Um, they both went up just a little bit last year. So I'm going to assume they'll both go up a few dollars again for 2022, but usually we find out in late November or December. Then Part C is called, also called Medicare Advantage because you know we have to give everything two names to make it a little bit more complicated to talk about. Part C kind of bundles A and B and C together. So a lot of Medicare Advantage programs you hear you don't have to pay that Part, P, part B premium. In some of the uh, policies, they will cover that Part B premium. Um, they also usually cover drug coverage, so you don't have to buy Part D. Many of them will cover basic dental, so cleanings, um, and uh, things such as silver sneakers and some vision. So they have other things that they do include in the Medicare Advantage. Then Part D, you probably won't need if you have Medicare Advantage, but there are a few plans that don't have Part D. So you may need both C and D, or if you don't take the Medicare Advantage Part C, you're going to have Part A, B, D, and probably what we'll talk about next, the Medigap policy. Um, so Part D is a drug coverage and it helps you um, to buy your prescription drugs unless they're already covered in Medicare Advantage, in which case you wouldn't sign up for Part D. So going back to that Medigap or Medicare supplement. So instead of a Medicare Advantage plan, you will go through an, a private insurance company to supplement what parts A and B don't cover. Because part A has a significant um, deductible that you pay each time you go to the hospital. And then part B only covers 80% of your doctor's charges. So you probably want to get either the advantage or the supplement. And um, that's this is the kind of choice you're making. The, the advantage we talked about earlier, which is called Part C or a Medicare supplement that's offered by outside insurers. There are many plans. They have letters because we, and the letters even start with A. So it makes it kind of confusing. Uh, but the plan G is currently the most common. Some of you probably have a plan F because they just phased that out two or three years ago. Uh, G replaces F. Um, G, the only difference between G and F are that with G, you have to pay that $203 deductible each year. So the first time or two you go to visit the doctor, you're going to have to pay. And once you've paid the $203, then part G will pick up everything beyond what Medicare part B covers. It will also pick up those deductibles for the Medicare part A, um, hospitalization. So there's lots of these companies that offer these plans. Um, that uh, URL that I had put on the, one of the first slides, this insurance.kansas.gov, is I've got it here again. That's what we use uh, when we're counseling. And we can give you some more information, but that's a place you can go to kind of see what all companies have these Medigap plans and, what it, and get a feel for what it should cost. Um, if you are in a plan G, there's about, in fact, I was going to go there. So let me just escape and I'll take you to the Medicare.gov or the Kansas insurance, excuse me, if I can get there without leaving Zoom. There we go. Okay, I had already gone into it. Um, let me go back so we can start fresh. Oh. 
All right, so if you go to insurance.kansas.gov and click on consumers and click on health insurance, then you can scroll down until you get to Medicare. You can also look at, um, there was a dental click here. There's lots of other kinds of insurance you can look at here. It's a good site for lots of people, but if you go to Medicare, which is what we're talking about today, then you can actually um, compare supplemental online comparisons. Gail, so, if, you're showing, if you're meaning to show us that website, we're not seeing it. You're not seeing it. Okay. Are you still seeing the presentation? We might go to the very top of your, oh, you I need it should be a new share. Just oh, thank you. New share and switch over to that uh, website. All right. And let me share that. Okay. So are you with me now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Let me just go back then to see that. Thank you. So we're on the insurance.kansas.gov and we're going to select under consumers. We're going to select health insurance. And under that, we're going to select Medicare, knowing that there's lots of things about vision and dental if you want to. And then um, you can do some comparisons here. So the comparison has to be based on age and you have to be 65 for this comparison because um, you generally have to be 65 for Medicare. Put in mine, I'm a female, it's my zip code. I don't use tobacco. And then I can select one of the many plans. As I said, G is the most popular. And that's the one I usually start my clients with. And then if for some reason that's a little expensive, we might look at a G high deductible, or we might look at one of the other plans that doesn't have quite the same coverage, but we'll start with G. We'll submit that. And now comes all the plans offered in the state of Kansas that I can get a G. It doesn't matter which of these companies I choose, the coverage is the exact same coverage, whether I go with Aetna or let me sort that by, I resort it by the lowest premium. If I go with Lumico for 1384 a year or with, uh, with this one, I don't even know who these are for 3000, I get the same coverage. Um, the only differences here are you have issue age policies. These policies, there's only three of them and they will base it. So if I get this when I first turn 65, every year my premium will be based upon being 65 because that's the first year I got it. Or if I get it, it's 68. It'll be based upon being 68. These premiums don't go up because I age. All of these attained age policies will go up each year as you get older both kinds can go up for inflation. So even these issue age will go up every year, but hopefully, maybe, probably not as fast as the attained age policies. The attained age policies, and I've sorted them right now by annual premium. As a counselor, I also have a, a rating scale. So if you contact me or one of our counselors, we can tell you which companies have the better financial ratings. We don't have information about their customer service ratings, but we can say which ones maybe are more stable financially. And we would um, encourage, we would usually recommend the top three lowest that are stable typically, unless you want to look at um, the Aetna's or the Blue Crosses, and then we're always happy to give you those estimates. If I go into this first one on top, the Lumico Life Insurance Company, and so the, for, that works out to be about $115, $116 a month. Then I can see what I put in as my parameters and the annual premium. And let's see, this one does, oh, this is really interesting. Many of these companies in the attained age do offer household discounts. So if you and your spouse are going to get on Medicare within a short period of time of each other, you probably want to look at one of the companies that's the best for each of you that offers a household discount. Many, many of them are 7%. Some of them say they just offer it. So I don't know what they offer um, until I go in here. But um, that is worth looking into if there's, um, if you and your spouse are both going to be joining Medicare around the same period of time. 
Okay. So going back here, um, again, this, this just helps you. And then once you select one or two or three, you can call them, your, their phone numbers are listed and get an actual quote from them. This is just the latest on, that the Kansas has posted. So it, it may change somewhat. It probably does the first of each year. All right, I'm going back to the PowerPoint now and I will remember to do go back to the new share. Yes. Okay, let's see, we didn't talk. Well, we talked about the rates are quoted based on your age, gender, tobacco, and zip code. You notice they are not quoted based upon your health condition. If you select a Medigap policy at the time you first go on Medicare, and you went on Medicare when you should have during your initial or your special enrollment period, then those companies have to sell you a policy regardless of your health status. So it's another reason not to wait um, if you um, to pick your supplement at the time you go on part A, part B rather. Some people go on A before B. So they will automatically enroll you in part A if you are already getting social security, they will enroll you when you turn 65. These, there's some other conditions that you're automatically enrolled in parts A and B. But when you are automatically enrolled in parts A and B, you'll get your red, white, and blue Medicare card about three months before you turn 65. If you are not taking Social Security and you want to enroll in parts A or B, then you have to contact the Social Security Administration. Um, so many people are turning 65 and they're going to defer taking their Social Security benefit until they're 67 or 70 or something like that. So then you do have to contact them. It will not be an automatic enrollment. You may want to defer part B. So many people will, they turn 65, they take A, it's free hospitalization insurance coverage. It's secondary if you have other insurance coverage with an employer that has 20 or more employees. If they have 20 or less employees, it's primary coverage. So, you know, just something to look up and check into, but, um, but you can defer the part B because remember there's a premium of $148 and 50 cents a month. You may want to, if you or your spouse have insurance through work, you can defer going on part B until that employment ends or until that coverage ends and still get on part B without a penalty and get your, add your Medigap and your part D without penalties. So the, the question to ask if, you are turning 65 and you're going to keep working or your spouse is working and providing the insurance coverage is be sure you ask HR or that work coverage is if it's creditable coverage. It probably is, the colleges certainly is, but just something to ask. But it's okay to go ahead and enroll in part A unless you're contributing to an HSA. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it's free, so why not? But if you want to continue you contributing to the HSA, that's another little gotcha that can happen to you. So we'll get there. And we're going to get there right now. <laughs> uh, traps to avoid. So if you are contributing to a health savings account, typically you want to just stop that before your 65th birthday. So the month before you turn 65, you tell your HR, I can't contribute to my HSA any longer. But if you plan to work well beyond 65 or be covered on your spouses and um, they're going to work well beyond you turning 65. You can do it. You just need to stop it six months before you start taking part A. So you have to know six months in advance uh, that you're gonna start taking part A. Um, and that's because the IRS, it's an IRS penalty for contributing to an HSA and being on Medicare at the same time. And they look back six months. So it's an IRS rule, not one I'm really familiar with. If you find yourself in this situation, contact your tax accountant. My tax accountant tells me there's, eh, there's some things we can maybe do. Um, the next tip to give to you is when you enroll in Medicare, A and B, be sure you go ahead and enroll in a Part D. Um, like I said, the Part Ds, you know, that's, 
$7.30 now, $6.60, what or 80, whatever it is, is pretty cheap. But a lot of times they look like more like $25 or $30 a month. So it seems high. But if you wait until, you know, maybe years down the road, you're like, ooh, now I have some expensive medications and I don't, I want Medicare to help pay for them. They do charge a 1% per month, every month for the rest of your life penalty. So if you waited two years, they'd add 24% onto your Part D premium. And that's 24% of the average premium. So it's right now it's about 24% of $33 added on to your premium each and every month. So it's best just to go ahead and recognize you need to have a Part D and enroll in the Part D. We talked a little bit about Medicare Advantage and Medicare and Medigap policies. Again, that's the path you're going to choose when you first get onto Medicare. Um, in Kansas City, I think there are 43 Medicare Advantage plans, so there are lots of choices. Um, but and Medicare.gov is a good way to research those. You probably want to look at which plans. Um, your doctor takes and which plan, which hospitals those plans use that you want to use and what drugs they cover. Um, but that's something that's pretty personal for each person to look into. So it's not something I've spent a lot of time on. I can give you some guidelines if you're interested in a Medicare Advantage. Um, but no, once you've been on Medicare Advantage for 12 months, after in your initial enrollment period, if you want to go back to a Medigap policy of like, ooh, now I'd really like to see some doctors that aren't covered by my Medicare Advantage plan, um, you will have to go through underwriting. So you may not even be able to get onto a Medigap policy at that time. So I always advise my clients to really think about which path and, and assume that whichever path you take, the A and B plus the Medigap plus the Part D or the a, B, and C all bundled together under Medicare Advantage. Really think about, you know, this year and five years from now and 20 years from now, because um, that's really the decision you're making. And the last tip I have for you is the shingles vaccine is not currently covered under the Part D deductible. And so if you are still under employer coverage or know someone who is, I encourage them to get that uh, while the college or their employer is covering it. Oh, I do have a, just another little reminder of what Medicare does not cover. It does not cover long-term care. Um, so if you go to assisted living and because you need help or are in nursing care, it does not cover that. It covers rehab. So if you're in the hospital for procedure, or a stroke or something like that, and you get released to a rehab facility, it will help cover the rehab for a certain period of time, but it doesn't cover long-term care. It does not cover any dental care unless that's part of your Medicare Advantage. So you have to decide whether you wanna get a separate dental insurance. No Medicare covers any cosmetic surgery or acupuncture or hearing aids, exams for the hearing aids. Um, it doesn't cover vision. Some Medicare Advantage programs may, with the exception of medical conditions. If you have a medical condition such as glaucoma, it'll cover the medical portion of that, but not the eyeglasses or the uh, vision testing. And it does not cover care outside of the US and its territories other than for emergencies. So it and if you move outside of the US, you are not under Medicare any longer. So um, when you're outside of the US traveling, consider travel insurance um, because sometimes you have an emergency and that's covered, but then something else comes up and then that's not covered. So you'd want to consider the travel insurance and some supplements. So part G supplement under the Medigap does cover emergencies. Most of them do, but there may be a couple that don't. So if you're looking at a Medigap supplement, um, be sure that you are that you look to see whether that covers emergencies. All right, I have done a lot of talking. I'm ready to try to answer questions. I'm going to stop. Well, you won't stop sharing because I might need to look at it, but I want to look at all of you. I can't.
questions? I can't necessarily see hands, so. <clears throat> Gail? Yes. This is, this is Clarissa. Um, so I just turned 65 this year, so got through all this mess. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, and um, actually used a shift counselor to help me through that process. Am I correct that you, you sign on with your uh, supplement insurance company and you're kind of locked into that forever unless they default or go out of business or something like that? Yeah, thanks. That's a really good question. So if you sign on to Lumico, uh, which I'll use as an example because nobody's ever heard of them. They tend to be one of the lowest cost, um, but they're probably, and I don't know, but they're probably a really big insurance company that they probably insure on, you know, property or something that we just don't deal with. But yes, unless they go out of business, you'll be, Lumico will be your insurer forever or whomever you first sign up with, Aetna or whomever. Changed insurance company since I signed Gail, is that part G you just answered that question to? It's any of the Medigaps. So part G, part F, part A, part N, whatever all parts there are, any Medigap company, um, that would be the case. So even in open enrollment, you can't change your part F or G? Right. Open enrollment really has nothing to do with your Medigap policy. There's no, there's no open enrollment for Medigap other than your initial enrollment. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Has anybody had that you want, that you're willing to share um, bad experiences with any Medigap or Medicare Advantage policies um, that you could help me learn from? Or good experiences. I just got bombarded with all kinds of options, you know, because everybody knew I was turning, I guess, 65. Oh, they so, do. Uh, just weeding through all that. And then, um, you know, you make some assumptions that the ones that you are more familiar with, like Humana or Aetna or Blue Cross, are going to be in the running. And really, like you say, plan G is plan G is plan G. And from a cost perspective, it's, they're, they're way on the list quite a few ways down the list quite a bit. Yeah. The United the Healthcare of Kansas. By, yeah. The United Healthcare by AARP is, you know, one that, you know, you hear from a lot and they do tend to be one of the more expensive ones. Mm -hmm. I also should point out, I don't know, I think maybe all of you live in Kansas, but it varies a little bit by state to state. So if you don't live in Kansas, please contact your ship in the state you live in. Um, and I don't know that Missouri is that much different, but in Florida, I understand, like in Florida, everybody's on a Medicare Advantage plan. And I don't know exactly why that is, but they must have, they must run things a little bit differently there. In Kansas, it tends to lean more towards the Medigap. So I talk about that a lot more, uh, but Med and Medicare Advantage can be very, very good for people um, who that, that, that it works for. But we tend to talk more about Medigap because with the Medigap, you know how much you're going to pay. You know, with the Medicare Advantage, it depends on how many times, you know, what your co-pays are. And while they have an out-of-pocket maximum, I've seen those. I think the one I showed was a $10,000 annual out-of-pocket, which would be pretty steep. So, Gail, if you have a Medigap policy and say if for, at the beginning you chose one of the more expensive ones, is there, is there no option at that point, like the following year, to change to a less expensive one? Correct. Okay. Now, what I hope, and I'm hoping I'll kind of learn this as I go through and maybe see clients over and over again, but I don't know, is that, you know, I don't know if you can think, well, they're more expensive, but maybe they won't go up as fast as others. I right. don't know. I haven't heard that. Well, um, I the, know. Go ahead. On the Kansas side, there's a little graph for each of the companies. That's right that um, shows you at least for a period of time, I think it's three years maybe, it shows you what their increases have been over that time frame. So you can kind of tell from year to year what the jump has been. You can do kind of a comparison, you know, uh, if they went up 10%, you know, did the others go up 10% or do they stay pretty flat or whatever? Right, that's, that's great. And I do advise my clients to look at that and or ask, 
you know, if they have two or three in the top running, ask them what their rate increases have been over the last, you know, if you could get five or more years, that would be even better. Um, but definitely something to look at. Gail, this is Joan. Um, I haven't looked into D yet. Um, my frustration has always been that m my husband, we're dealing with some really high tier drugs mm -hmm. and they're never on the list mm -hmm. and they can never tell you how much it's going to cost until the 1st of January. Mm. Okay. So all that information is great as long as all your drugs are already on the, on the list. Right. But when they're not, it's a total shot in the dark and it's really frustrating. And is that true for the Medicare Advantage plans as well as just Part D plans? Have you looked at, um, compared those on your Medicare Advantage? By uh, we'd, be, we'd be broke if we had gone Advantage. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what to suggest to you, Joan, if that's yeah, I, sticky wicket. You know, uh, as I say, I haven't done it this year. I hope maybe it's changed this year, but he's... We've got at least three drugs that are typically not on any of the formularies or whatever the crazy things are called. Mm -hmm. You have to get approval every year. I mean, from changed, we've changed medical. That you need drugs. that drug. She so, said, gee, I don't know if she just means the medical. Well, somebody talking in the background, can they make themselves, please? Yeah, I was talking about part D for drugs. Right. D for drugs. So um, when you look at those on the Medicare.gov, their tier, and I honestly, because I haven't been doing this that long, don't know that much about those tiers, but they're, they're on the highest tier. But do they cover them outside of when you get out of the coverage gap? Do they show uh, if they if they approve them after okay. your doctor has submitted why he wants you on that instead of a generic supplement and they're okay. always trying to get you to switch and sure we switched before and it was hazard it was very poor for his health so okay. uh, we stay with what the doc says but sure. it's just always there's no sound there's no way of really knowing until the the year starts yeah joan you might want to go ahead and uh, get in contact with uh one of our counselors at SHIC. i know part of our training and this is you know this is certainly a case i would escalate to one of our more experienced counselors or the um, staff um, but part of our training is to try to help you through that process um, so if you want to contact i I think I had Amy Shackelford's information at the beginning or just that general office number. Um, they can probably help you. In fact, they, we have a new director who used to work for Medicare.gov. So she probably is an excellent source. Her name is Karen Eager. Um, so she can probably just talk you through whether there's any um, better ways that I'm just not familiar with. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. I think we appealed, uh, I appealed something one time, a drug, and it was approved at a lower rate. And that's been several years ago. I don't know if they're still doing that. They, they should yeah. do that. And that's something we're supposed to be able to help our clients with. And just, you know, until you, until you get some of these things and work through it, um, I can't really speak to it. But it sounds like Joan has already, already been through that too a little bit. So Yeah, we, we've tried that route too. And it's worth trying for sure. Another thing that I will share is um, I, compl I, I complained again about the cost of one of the drugs long enough that the um, neurologist actually sent in the pharmacist to talk to us at the last meeting. And she says, well, are you aware of the foundation? Uh, no, what foundation? So my husband has Parkinson's and those are those pretty expensive drugs. And so I says, no, I says, I don't feel like I don't want to take money from somebody that can't afford it. And she says, no, no, if he has Parkinson's, he will be approved by this foundation. That just saved us a boatload of money this year. Good. 
or yeah, bug people, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, you keep asking the questions of many people. I know some, many of my clients have also met with brokers and I think that's great. You know, they're just getting different perspectives on um, the issues. So if you meet with a broker, I'd rather you get too much information and talk to people um, than not go out there and ask the questions and try to get somebody because it is so complex. Nobody understands it all. And so, um, if you have something a little more special, it's better to just keep people picking people's brains and hopefully someone will come up with something to help you out. Um, this is Paula Gamble and I'm probably pretty ignorant to all this, but um, we, I get all these calls. I'm not 65 until next year, but mm -hmm. I have six months or how does that work? I can start enrolling or how does that work six months ahead? I may have missed some of this too. I couldn't get on it first. That's yeah. No, you didn't. I didn't go over that in detail. Okay. Um, your initial enrollment period, because you've retired, correct, Paula, you're not going to be staying yes. on employer. You won't be on an employer insurance. So your initial okay. enrollment period is there's a seven month window. It's the month of your birthday plus three months before and three months after. So certainly we encourage you about four months before your 65th birthday to, um, to apply for part A and B, unless you're already taking social security and then you'll automatically get that. And then to select your path, either the advantage or the Medigap plus a part D and start researching those. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I guess everybody gets these calls all the time. Are those, people are, should I not go with those people and go with someone like you or another chick person or who are these people that keep calling? The people that keep calling are more than likely from the Medicare Advantage plans. Okay. You see a lot of advertisements from them. Joe Namus on TV now. He's got a, a heck of a deal for you. Uh, he may or may not have. It might be a great deal for you, but I would encourage you to call the chick counselor like me. Um, mm -hmm or a broker if you're, if you'd like to, um, and, or both and get more broad information to at least help you down which path you want to go. Right. Get you some initial costs. Okay. Okay. And I'm so, so I'm so excited you're on the call and, um, get that. I have also heard, I'm very excited that, that, you know, Congress is considering Medicare at age 62. I think it's the current, consideration, which means we'll be really busy counseling, but um, yeah, and Lori's going, oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> and, and I'm going, it would be too, because what I'm paying uh, for the JCCC coverage is a lot more than I'd be paying for uh, Medicare. So. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. So it's, it's a killer. Yeah. So that's why, you know, and, and those of you who've already been on it, I still really encourage you, the people you know that are getting close to retiring or turning 65 to, you know, to research this because you are inundated with information. And I have talked to too many people who it just paralyzed them and they didn't do anything. And then that's costing them their pain penalties that they shouldn't be paying, or they made quick decisions, uh, not really understanding everything. So that's, that's really my passion right now is to find people like Paula and Lori and myself and um, get the word out that you need to talk to somebody. It's important. My husband started Medicare uh, this year. So we went through the weeds earlier this year and yeah. we found a broker that we really um, like, and he walked us through, you know, all of our options from, you know, A, B and D to advantage to, you know, the whole bit. So it really helped us bring some clarity to it because it was just chaos trying to figure out what's what and which direction to go. And, you know, what does this mean and what does that mean? So it really, it, it, it you almost have to work with somebody. Yeah. I, I think it's best to, um, I know some brilliant people who thought they were making the right decisions. They read Medicare book, but they didn't want to talk to all those people who are contacting them and um, they will be paying penalties the rest of his life because they just, it, miss something right wow. 
you know, and I've put something out to retirees asking for some recommendations on brokers because, you know, so many of our members have already been through all this. Mm-hmm. So we've got great resources like you and like others that have already gotten into Medicare. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you all for your time. Um, I think my contact information is there. I think it's my SHIC um, contact information. Um, so I use a separate email that I don't check every day, but um, my SHIC number and my um, SHIC email are on there if you want to contact me or you just contact the main office and you can talk to another volunteer or, or one of the employees. Um, we are all happy to help you. <laughs>